you ever wondered about the differences between the pug and the corgi? Well, in today's video, we will be comparing these two breeds who are short in size but massive in personality. Welcome back to the Fenrir Pug Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Rachel and I'm the co-founder here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. Everything that we do here is dedicated to helping you find the perfect breed for you and then helping you to become a high level canine leader who can raise the perfect canine companion. If that sounds like you then make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to make sure that you never miss a future upload. So let's dive into today's video where we'll be comparing these two beautiful breeds. Let's start by talking a little bit about the pug and their history. The origin of the pug dates back over 2,000 years ago in China. They are believed to be related to the Tibetan Mastiff, and they were favourite amongst Chinese emperors and lived in luxurious accommodation. Pugs were closely held treasures, and the only way an outsider could acquire one is if they were gifted. Although the breed is over 2,000 years old, it took until the late 16th century and early 17th century for them to make it out of China and the Far East, and start finding their way around the rest of the world. They started to appear in European countries thanks to Dutch traders and they quickly became a favourite of European royalty. In Holland they became the official dog of the House of Orange, after reportedly saving the life of William, Prince of Orange. In France both Marie Antoinette and Josephine Bonaparte owned pugs. They have a rich history in English royal families as well. Most famously Queen Victoria had many pugs and she also bred them. They then made their way to the United States after the Civil War and were first recognised by the American Kennel Club in 1885. To give them their full name, the Pembroke Welsh Corgi is a dog with an interesting background. Historians believe that the Corgi is descended from Valhuns, who were Swedish cattle dogs that were brought to Wales by the Vikings in the 9th and 10th centuries. Whilst others believe them to have descended from dogs that were brought to Wales by Flemish weavers in the 12th century. The exact origin remains debated and still unknown. But the UK Kennel Club first recognised corgis as a purebred dog in the 1920s. They were officially known as Welsh corgis when exhibited for the first time in 1925. And there are two recognised breeds of Welsh corgi, the Pembroke and the Cardigan. At that time they were recognised by the UK Kennel Club both Pembrokes and Cardigans were shown in the same class as one breed. Over a decade later in 1934 both the UK and American Kennel Club recognised the Pembroke and the Cardigan as two separate breeds. When we think of a Corgi today most people think of the Pembrokes as they have slowly gained popularity in the United States of America and today have cracked the top 50 most popular dog breeds. But one of the main reasons that they have become so popular and well known is because of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, who received her first Pembroke Welsh Corgi from her father King George VI in 1933. After falling in love with her first Corgi as a young girl, the Queen went on to breed and own over 30 Corgis in her lifetime. The Pug is a small and sturdy dog with a barrel-like appearance. They have relatively short legs and are known for their wide chests and flattened face. They're known for the deep wrinkles on their face and forehead and they have a tail that has a natural curl which could be one loop or two. Another distinguishing feature of the pug's appearance is the thumbprint and whilst this is not seen on every pug it's a smudge of black on the forehead. The pug has four basic colours, fawn, silver, apricot and black and not all rec colours are recognised by different kennel clubs. The UK Kennel Club recognises all four, whereas the American Kennel Club only recognises fawn and black. Both male and female weigh between 14 and 18 pounds, and on average they are 10 to 14 inches tall at the shoulders. Corgis are also described as being quite sturdy and athletic, despite their small size. They're quite long for their height, and in fact are probably twice as long as they are tall. They have pricked ears and a pointed muzzle, and features that have been described as fox-like. Despite their bodies being low, they are strong and sturdily built, which allows them to still be active. They were originally built for herding, as they are naturally athletic dogs. Corgis have a medium length, dense double coat, which means that their coats are double coated with a thick undercoat, covered on top by another layer of longer, weather resistant guard hairs. Their coats come in different colours, such as red, sable, fawn or tricoloured, which is a combination of red, black and tan. 
They usually have white markings on their neck, chest, belly and muzzles. They typically stand between 10 and 12 inches tall at the shoulder and should weigh no more than 30 pounds. If you are looking for a dog to hunt, guard or retrieve, then the pug is probably not best for you. Pugs were bred to be companion dogs. The pug craves affection and is most happy when curled up on your lap. But the pug is not just a lap dog. They are playful and comical and they enjoy living it up and delighting their owner with silly antics. Their temperament is affected by a number of factors including training and socialisation, but pugs with nice temperaments are curious and playful, willing to approach people and be held by them. Like every dog, the pug needs early socialisation, exposure to many different people, sights, sounds and experiences from the earliest moment possible. Socialisation helps ensure that your pug puppy grows up to be a well-rounded dog. Personality-wise, pugs are happy and affectionate, loyal and charming, playful and mischievous. They are an intelligent breed but can be very stubborn, which makes training difficult but not impossible. Whilst pugs can be good watchdogs, they aren't known for excessive barking or yapping. And if trained and well socialised, they get along well with other animals and children. They are a small, quiet breed and are relatively inactive when indoors. When having a corgi, it is important to know that they are strong individuals with a mind of their own. They were originally used for herding, but became popular family companions due to their loyalty, trustworthy nature and desire to please their owners. They are known for being happy, loving and intelligent, but at times they can also be stubborn or independent. They are easy to train, but don't expect them to always do as they are told, as they like to think for themselves. Although they want to please their owners, food is the big motivator for them when training. Corgis also make good watchdogs and they are naturally suspicious of strangers and will be quick to bark if they feel that something or someone is threatening their home and family. Like every dog, the corgi needs to be socialised at an early age. You should expose them to as many different people, sights, sounds and experiences as possible. Socialisation helps ensure that your corgi puppy grows up to be a well-mannered family companion. Pugs are known for their love of children due to their robust nature, they can handle playtime even when it gets a little rough. However, as with any breed, playtime with your pug and children should always be supervised. They get along well with other pets and small animals as they are not shown to show any form of aggression towards them. This has made them a popular choice the world over as a family pet or companion. They are extremely friendly even when they're around people that they don't know. Although not clingy, they do like to be around the people that they love and they will come to you for affection, however want to go off and do their own thing when they're happy. A well socialised pug makes the perfect family companion. Corgis are great around children, but thanks to their herding instincts they sometimes nip at children's feet or ankles, especially those of younger children. Corgis are however keen to learn and this behaviour can be trained out of them from a young age. As you should with any breed, please make sure that you also take the time to teach children how to approach and touch the corgi. They are probably better suited to families with older children. They usually are good with other pets in the household, so long as they have been well socialised. If they are not socialised, they can become a little aggressive around other dogs. They get on well with cats if they have grown up with them, but they would happily chase off and scare cats or small animals that they don't know. The pug and the corgi are both small dogs with large personalities. Both are small and sturdy and love to please their owners. They require a small amount of exercise and love to cuddle in the lap of their owner. Despite their small stature, either would make a big addition to your family home. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you hit that like button, get involved down in the comments section below and don't forget if you're new here to make sure that you subscribe. We have two dedicated pug videos coming here every week. So I can't wait to talk to you again soon on the next episode of the Fenrir Pug Show.